In a previous video, I talked about how we compute beta. And beta is our measure of systematic risk. And we want to use this measure of systematic risk to help us price expected return. And the basic concept in finance is, is that if you want higher expected return, you have to take on more risk. And what kind of risk do you have to take? You have to take the risk that can't be diversified away, or what we call systematic risk. Now, <clears throat> what we do here, and we have a model, actually I think I have the title up here, Capital Asset Pricing Model. And it's an equilibrium pricing model. And um, you know I'm not going to go into the details of, of how it's derived, basically. But it relates systematic risk to expected return. And, you know, so how do we, it's, it's going to turn out to be a straight line relationship between risk and return. So how do we get a couple of points on our line? And this line is what we're going to call the security market line. Well, let's look at our graph here. Well, okay, here we have the origin. Well, one point, in order to draw a line, we need two points. One line, or one point, is going to be where the risk-free rate is. Because the risk-free rate doesn't have any risk, no systematic risk. It's the y-intercept term. So there we have one point. Okay, Another point we can have would be where the beta for the market is. We know what the beta for the market is. It's going to be 1. Beta is normalized so that it is um, <clears throat> it's going to be equal to 1. A beta greater than 1 means you're less volatile than the market. A beta greater than 1 will mean that you're more volatile than the market. So what's the return for the market? Well, up here we would have there's some expected return for our market. And so now we have two points. Let me see if I can draw up from here and get one more point, right? That would be my point right here. Maybe I can draw that a little darker. All right, so let's connect the dots, essentially. I go from here, and uh, well, that'll make it a different color. If I connect this with this, I have what we call the security market line, SML. And this relates beta with the expected return. And this line has an equation. Okay, you could work out the equation, right? We know there's a an intercept term. Remember the equation for a straight line? Y equals mx plus b. Well, what's y? Y is the expected return. So the expected return for let's say stock I is going to be equal to, and the equation for a straight line is, you know, y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept term. The intercept term is the risk-free rate. Plus what? Plus um, y, which is um, plus x, mx. The slope of this line is what we call the market risk premium, and you can get it by calculating the rise over the run. Remember that for slope? What's the rise? The rise is the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. What's the run? 1 minus 0 or 1. So the slope here, what we call the market risk premium, is going to be equal to expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. Okay, So our equation for the line is going to be the expected return for stock I equals the risk-free rate plus beta I times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. Okay, And the beauty of this line, this equation, is that in equilibrium everything should lie on the line. What does the line tell us? 
the line tells us if we know what risk you're taking, this is the level we draw up to the line. So if we take a point here, and I'll pick another color here, and I draw up to the line, and then I draw across, that tells me what my expected return should be given this model. Okay. The only thing that's different for different companies is the beta. The expected return of the market is the same for all stocks. The risk-free rate is the same for all stocks. So the only thing that matters is beta. If you have a higher beta, so let me pick a, pick a different color here. I pick a stock with a higher beta. Okay, this is above one. And I draw across. What do you see? You see that we expect a higher expected return, right? Bigger beta means bigger expected return. Okay, that's that upward slope. All right, let's punch in a couple of numbers here. Let's see what we can do. Let's say that the expected return, tell you what, I'm rather than write the E of R, I'm going to write R bar I for the average or expected return because it's a little bit easier to write. It's not quite as tedious. I probably should have done it before. Okay, risk-free rate plus beta I R bar M minus RF. So this and this are the same. It's just, again, a little less less writing, a little bit neater. And let's assume that the risk-free rate is 1%. And the expected return of the market is 8%. If we have a stock with a beta equal to 1.2, let's find the expected return. Well, the expected return is going to be equal to 1% plus 1.2, the beta, times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So if we work that out, what do we get? We get 7 times 1.2, okay, plus 1%. We expect 9.4%. So if I went back to the graph I had, okay, if this happens to be, right here, happens to be 1.2, then this expected return here would be 9.4, okay? This beta would be 1, and the expected return of the market, if I had drawn up there, would be 8%. The risk-free rate here would be 1%, okay? probably not drawn to scale, but you get the idea. So this is a nice model that we have. And why do we have it? Well, because we want to be able to figure out what return we should use for different levels of risk. Okay? In many of the things we do in finance, we use an interest rate. We use a discount rate. And a lot of times we just give you that interest rate. The interest rate is 5%. Well, where did that come from? It can come from a theoretical model like this. And this is the return that's required for the level of risk you're taking. And it gets used in a lot of things. It gets used in, in setting, for example, electricity, uh, uh, electric rates for a public utility. Why do they use this? The assumption is, is that the electric company should earn a fair rate of return based on the level of risk it's taking, or it's beta. So they figure out what return the electric company should earn, and then they work backwards to figure out what rate they would have to charge in order to earn that fair return. If they don't earn that fair return, it'll be the case that not enough money flows into the industry, so we won't be able to build those power plants. Nobody will want to invest in new electric power plants. Sometimes we call that a capital attraction standard. Okay, You have to attract money or attract capital, capital into the business. And in order to do that, you have to provide a fair return. 
Okay, if you if you have a hard time thinking about business, think about it from a personal point of view. Okay, everybody has some wage that they think is fair. All right, you're not going to take a job that requires a law degree and expect to get paid seven dollars and fifty cents an hour. Okay, that's not going to attract anybody to be a lawyer. You need to get paid a fair wage for the level of Maybe it's not risk, but for all the education and credentialing that you need and certification that you need to be a lawyer, to be a doctor. Okay, So, you know, that, that's the thing. Why do a lot of people get into investment banking? Because the wages are very high if you become successful at it. So it's important to get paid a fair wage, okay, just like it's important for a business to get a fair rate of return, otherwise people won't invest in the business they won't have the resources to expand and to continue on 